this year, the Red Shoes inspired look. So a little bit about the Red Shoes. It's a film directed in 1948 by Michael Powell and Emery Pressburger. I don't know if I'm saying the latter's name correctly and I'm really sorry if I mispronounced it. But basically it's about um, the ballet, The Red Shoes, which is based off of the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. And um, it's very interesting. It's kind of a bit of a love triangle, visually so stunning. It was filmed in Technicolor, so the blues and reds are very saturated and beautiful. And um, like halfway into the film, you finally get to see the ballet, The Red Shoes. And I actually replayed it a few times because I was just so in love. The way the transitions were and how it was spliced and all the scenes and the special effects. And it was like so dreamy and I'm and it kind of psychedelic. There's a scene where cellophane's falling and um, I'm like, I had to remind myself this was made in 1948 because it could have tricked me into thinking that was like a late 60s, early 70s film. Just that scene alone, how it was filmed. But um, yeah, really cool film and I was in love with this makeup. I have saved photos of this makeup for quite some time. I've tried recreating it in the past. It went okay. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm not actually that great at covering my eyebrows, although I amazed myself today because they don't look awful. But um, yeah, just really cool film. I highly encourage you guys to watch it you're not gonna regret it. It's really, really great. And like I said, not just visually stunning, but it's actually a really good story. So yeah, I don't wanna talk too much, but um, just stay tuned and I will show you how to get this makeup look. I'm sorry I didn't film a hair tutorial. I wasn't going, I was going to, but then I was like, oh, I'm probably gonna fuck it up anyways. So I didn't, and then it didn't turn out so bad. And now I'm just like, wah, wah, regrets. I'm sorry, maybe I'll film one later. Anyways, tutorial, yeah. So the very first thing that we need to do is cover our eyebrows. So I am taking an Elmer's glue stick and just doing tiny circular motions, running this through my eyebrows, trying to get every single hair coated, nice and thick. I want them to lay down really flat. And now I'm taking a spoolie and running this through my eyebrows, trying to flatten the hairs and brush them up so they lay super flat. And then I'm going to take my hair dryer on a cool setting and I'm going to go ahead and speed up the glue drying process. Now in order to get a really smooth looking eyebrow, we're going to have to repeat this step a few times. So here I am just running some glue over my eyebrow and taking a little wipe and just wiping off any of that excess glue. And here I am drying it once again. Now this next step is a Trixie Mattel tip and you lick the glue stick, I know, seems kind of gross, but you lick it and run that over your eyebrow one last time and it helps really smooth any little bumps on your eyebrow. And now I'm drying it about halfway and I'm taking a loose setting powder, this is from Cody, and using the powder puff and just dusting that over my eyebrow. And I'm going to start pressing really hard since the glue is still a little bit gummy underneath. And here I am putting some powder on my palm and using my palm to press that glue down even further. And taking a big powder brush, I'm just dusting off some extra powder. Now we need to color correct and conceal our eyebrow cover. So I am taking a bit of a warm peachy concealer and with a beauty sponge, I'm just pouncing that over my eyebrow area. You want to use pouncing motions because you don't want to remove the glue underneath. And here I am just kind of building the opacity of this concealer and blending out the edges. And next I'm taking that loose face powder and just dusting that over before I work on my next layer. I am taking a full coverage foundation in a color that's a bit lighter than I am and with a brush, you can also use a beauty blender but I happen to be using a brush today, I'm going to go ahead and start applying all of this all over my face, blending it out and I'm working on the lower half of my face first. I want to save the eyebrow area for last just because I don't want to move around whatever product I already have on there. As you can see, I'm picking up foundation and just stippling that over my eyebrow area, trying to get this as close to my hairline as possible, and once again building up the opacity of the eyebrows because I don't want my eyebrow to be showing through.
I need a little more coverage, so I'm going back in with that palette, but this time picking up a color closer to the foundation that I'm using. I am using my fingers and tapping that over my eyebrow and finally covers them completely. And right after I do this, I'm going to go ahead and powder my whole face down with loose setting powder. This is a very heavy look, so it's okay if it looks kind of cakey. It's supposed to be stage makeup anyways. Now for the stressful part. So I am taking a black eyeliner pencil and using my nostril as a guide. I am trying to match the eyebrow and here we're doing a very skinny eyebrow that kind of swoops up. And what you really want to focus is this outer edge. It kind of goes down and then swoops up again almost like it's being winged out. So here I am trying to make sure that it's even and as you can see I was very stressed. Um, and trying not to fuck this up because, you know, there's no going back once you start doing this. So maybe use like a light brown or a nude pencil first and then use black. But I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to go ahead and use black anyways. <laughs> So now that I didn't completely screw the eyebrows up, I am taking a very large shader brush and dipping into this medium toned brown. It's a little bit on the warmer side and just loading up my brush and I'm going to apply this all over my eye from lash line to penciled in brow. Now what you really want to pay attention to is the outer part of this eye look. As you can see, I go from the corner of my eye and sweep it towards the tail of this eyebrow in almost a winged out style. And this is going to just make the eye look very lifted, which is what you want for this look. With that same brush, I am picking up some more of that loose powder and I'm just going to run this along the edge of the eyeshadow just to soften it and clean up any anything that looks like it's a little muddy or just not blended well. This step is optional, but I want to add a little bit more depth and dimension to my eyes, so I'm taking a blending brush and dipping into this burgundy color, although you can use a dark brown as well, and I am just running this through my crease, blending it out and trying to soften it, once again just to add a little bit more dimension so my eye doesn't look completely flat since I don't have that amazing of a crease. With a black liquid liner, I am going from the corner of my eye, but just below that, and extending a line out, slightly curved, and basically we're just creating a really large eyeliner wing, but it is important to make sure that it has a little bit of curvature to it, and that it starts on the very low end of your corner, and here I am just doing that like inner wing. Um, I don't think Moira Shearer had this on her makeup but I have kind of small eyes so I like doing this just to make them look a little bit larger. With a freshly sharpened red lip liner I'm gonna work on my outer corner just below that wing that we created and I'm gonna start making a line and I want it to be parallel to the wing that we just made but I want this line to extend out a little bit further than the black line. Next, I am taking that red eyeliner and doing a little circle on the inner corner of my eye, just above that little inner corner wing that we created. And because I use a lip liner and I don't want that to crease, I'm going to take a red eyeshadow and a little domed pencil brush, and I'm going to go ahead and pick some of that up and tap that just on the inner corner. By the way, using a red liquid lipstick probably would be better for this since you'd get a little bit more intensity from it. I am applying a nude or you could use a white eyeliner on my waterline and this is just going to help make your eyes look even more deranged and open. Going back in with that liquid eyeliner, I'm going to go ahead and start off by darkening my eyebrow. This was once again a tedious process, even though I already did the line, it's just kind of nerve wracking because you know, one, one mistake and it's game over. By the way, you don't have to go over your eyebrow with liquid eyeliner, I just think it's a nice step because it makes the eyebrows stand out more and it makes it look a little bit more graphic. 
almost illustrated even. Back in with that liquid liner, I'm once again working on the outer corner and I'm going to create a line that's going to be parallel to the red. And now I'm just making sure that that one falls shorter than the red line. And now working my way inwards, I am just going to create a line that goes straight out. And I'm stopping about halfway or a little bit past that. And here I am just trying to make sure that the line looks even all around. Now I'm just curling my eyelashes and we're going to go ahead and apply some mascara to your top and bottom lashes. This is basically just to coat them so that they don't have that white cast from all the powder fallout that I got on them. And because this is a stage makeup look, I'm going to take a very long, full, dramatic pair of synthetic false eyelashes and just popping those on. The reason why I chose a long synthetic pair is that when I look at pictures of Moira Shearer, her eyelashes are very long and they look very fake. They don't look natural at all. I don't want to do too much to the face. So I'm just taking a very soft pink blush and I'm going to go ahead and apply those on the tops of my cheek and it's just going to leave a very soft pink flush to your face. And because this is a very heavy makeup application, I am taking a little flat head brush and a very like soft taupey color and I'm just going to contour my nose a little bit since it kind of disappeared once again because the makeup made my face look really flat. This next step is very crucial. So with a red lip liner I'm going to start quite low on the cupid's bow and I'm going to create a slight crescent shape. Next I'm going to take that liner and I'm going to go up over my lip and over draw and I'm going to make sure that the outer corner of my lips are very rounded and that's going to create that classic, you know, iconic Moira Shearer shaped lip. And here I am just trying to perfect that and make sure that it looks very even. Once again, I feel like this is such an important part of the look. And so I just want to make sure that I get it very right. Now I'm going to start on the bottom lip and I'm going to overdraw it just a little bit. But when I reach the corner of my mouth, I want that line to fall within my lip line. So we're going to create almost like a little bit of a heart shaped lip. And I'm going to continue to try to perfect that. I want to make sure that all the lines are very smooth and nothing looks very jagged. So once again, on the center bottom lip, you want that to fall outside of your lip. And then once you reach the corner, you want that to be on the inside. And now I am taking Max Ruby Woo, which is a blue based red. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill in my lips. And now I'm taking a fine lip brush and I'm going to go ahead and just once again perfect the lips, make sure that everything looks smooth, that there's no jagged lines, there's no bleeding, and everything looks symmetrical and blended because the lip liner was just a touch darker than the lipstick. And it wouldn't be my video if there wasn't some cheesy mandatory posing going on. Because, you know, I just want you guys to see the makeup as if you hadn't just seen like 15 minutes of me putting makeup on. And this is it for the completed Victoria Page, Moira Sheer, The Red Shoes makeup look. So I had lots of fun recreating this look. It's a look that I've been in love with for a really long time. And I'm just really happy that I was able to finally get this out to you guys. I was kind of nervous. My eyebrow covering skills, not great. So um, might I suggest perhaps watching someone who's more qualified to show you how to cover your eyebrows and like watch their tutorial and then you can come back to this one and then just follow along with the makeup. Because um, yeah, eyebrows, they were a process. 
Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with this look. Some some things that I wanted to talk about. Um, let's start off with the lips. Look at these lips. I feel like divine with these lips. And I mean like Glenn divine. Not like divine intervention divine. If you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, these kind of like... 1940s lips, you know, where they're very rounded on the edges. The cupid's bow is actually pretty low on the lip. You know, kind of almost look like a heart or something. I feel they, they look funny sometimes. When I do that, they look crazy. But yeah, so I feel like this is kind of a crucial part of the makeup look um, just because it really dates it to like the 1940s. So um, work on that. I had to. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then another thing that I felt like really helped make this look look like it came from the 40s is the eyelashes. So I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time on Dr. Macro, which is a website where you can look at a lot of like really high quality photographs of like old Hollywood headshots and publicity photos. And so I, I like to spend a lot of time just staring at pictures because they're beautiful these actresses are so beautiful but their false eyelashes back then very synthetic looking they don't look very natural they're not usually very full but they are very lengthy very long and so I got this um, pair of eyelashes and I, I'll link them down below but they're very synthetic and I think they're perfect for this look because it just I feel like it gives it the right kind of feel but yeah, um, I think I'm making this outro really long and I wasn't trying to do that. But um, as always, I will leave a list of all the products I use down below in the description. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And yeah, thank you so much for being so supportive. And until next time, I am trying to film more frankly for you guys. And so let's hope that the streak that I'm on is a long one. But yeah, okay. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Hopefully with a Miss Groupie Supreme Mark Bolin 1970s sweetheart look. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. Okay. Um, until next time. <laughs>